Hey guys, so I'm attempting to film this video while I walk my dogs, which may be a crazy, crazy idea. We're out by the lake, and this is why it's a crazy idea. <laughs> uh, my dogs are still puppies, so they're a little crazy. Louis is definitely the hunter of the two. He thinks he's a tough guy. Anyway, we're out on this walk. Um, I am started off in a sweater. And then moved to a sports bra because it's actually kind of warm out. So my uh, Google Home said it was like 62 degrees. Definitely feels a lot warmer than that. We finally got some semi-nice weather. It's been in like the 40s. It was in the 30s when we shot for a news thing in bikinis a couple weeks ago. And it was brutal. Like brutal. Very difficult. Um, so it's nice that it's getting a little bit warmer. But we're still in winter so... Who knows what will happen. So I've wanted to do this update video on my fat transfer and just some things that happened in my experience and things I wanted to kind of talk about earlier um, and have talked about a little bit on my Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, definitely go follow me on Instagram. It's I am Silly Cavalli. I will definitely put that link down in the description below as well. So three years ago, January 2nd of 2019, I had my implants taken out and at the same time that I had those taken out, I had a fat, fat transfer at the same time. Um, there were some complications during this explant surgery. We were trying to do an M block, but we're not able to. Um, and I did have silicone leakage around my rib cage, which was causing some health issues on top of a autoimmune condition that was not being um, like taken care of. And so I was, definitely having a lot of health issues. Um, this was kind of like an emergency surgery because I was so sick, um, but I didn't get better after the surgery. And um, I also was a little bit disappointed with my fat transfer results. And we'll talk about that in this video. So I think the main thing that I was super disappointed with was um, the fact that I ended up getting, and I don't know if this is because I had the fat transfer at the same time as the explant, Whereas most people wait like six months, let their body settle. Um, but I had a lot of necrotic fat, which means that the fat cells die and they lump together and it creates these lumps inside of your breast tissue. So my breast, I went to go get a mammogram about, you guys may have seen that video actually. Um, went to go get a mammogram about like six months, seven months after getting my fat transfer because I had a severe lump in my left breast, which I still have. Um, it's the size of a golf ball. It doesn't feel good. You can feel it even touching it over clothes. Um, and it turns out that I have a lot of lumps. So even my primary doctors, like my gynecologist is like, you need to go get this checked out. You need to go get this checked out. You need to go get this checked out. We've already had it checked out. And what the doctor said was a little alarming. He's a mammogram guy. And he said that they'll never be able to tell if I have breast cancer because I have so many necrotic fat cells that it looks like a billion teeny like not even teeny there's like a billion little blobs and then there's big lumps and they'll just never be able to tell there's so many dead fat cells that it just looks like a mess up in there and unfortunately they'll never be able to tell if i have breast cancer unless you know i cut off all i suck out all the fat i get rid of all the fat i get rid of all my breast tissue and i guess restart from there which i don't know if i want to do that um, so it's a risk that I run and I think that every woman who's getting a fat transfer should know that you run this risk as well. Um, fat cells do die, especially when transferring and using certain methods. My doctor did smart lipo, which is not supposed to be done when you're doing a fat transfer. Um, so just keep that in mind. But she also was not a fat transfer. She had never done a fat transfer. So I was her first fat transfer patient. Um, so she didn't know, you know, what what best to use so do your research if you are getting a fat transfer and you're not doing like an explant um go to an explant specialist which she was but go to someone who is well versed in fat transfers because they know exactly what calendula is to use which is like the needle i think that's how it's pronounced um but that's the needle that sucks up the fat you have to use a specific one and you have to use a specific method in order to help the fat to survive and give it a better survival rate Another reason why I regret this, and this probably is because the fat cells died, a lot of them died, is that I feel like my breasts look just like they did in high school, only now I have scarring and lumps in my breasts and a lot of the fat tissue or a lot of the fat cells are gone. Um, so sometimes, you know, when you get a fat transfer, the cells will 
pretty much die. Um, I've had probably like maybe a 20 or 30 percent retention which isn't horrible I guess but it's not ideal so at this point my options are either basically cut out all the tissue that is necrotic and start over which I don't think I'll be able to do I don't have enough fat or to just add to it and this is why you don't walk with dogs add to it and um just be okay with the fact that I'll never know if I have any breast tissue. So even though we are keeping a tab on it and we're doing semi-annual mammograms, um, I'm never gonna be able to know for sure. So it does kind of stink um, and there's really nothing to do about it at this point besides get rid of all the fat tissue, scrape out the breast and start over again. Another thing to consider is that when you do get a fat transfer, you do have to have enough fat to transfer. I would say I probably have quite a bit of fat actually I have like enough to kind of pinch down here but I would definitely have to gain weight um, when I had my first fat transfer I actually was eating fast food every day to try and gain weight for my fat transfer um, which wasn't ideal because it exacerbated my autoimmune and after the surgery being under anesthesia I got sicker and sicker and sicker and my health completely collapsed after that so um, just be mindful that you know you may have to do excessive eating if you want to go undergo a fat transfer so do I regret it? Uh, no, I don't regret it. Um, I just wish I did it differently. I wish I waited six months. I would have had a better outcome. Um, I wish that I just was a little bit more versed in this. I wish I watched more videos, done more research on it. I thought I did enough research. I definitely did not. Um, so in conclusion for this video, I just wish I did more precautions. Um, I wish that I asked for the best doctor in fat transfer and you know maybe in the future I'll do another one but for now I think I'm just happy being healthy and I want to celebrate that and live in that right now um, and maybe down the road do another one. So I hope you guys liked this video. I hope this helped you. Um, if you have any questions drop them below and um, yeah just if you're looking to get it done just do your research find a good doctor someone who's done quite a few of them um and don't be impatient know that it is a process you're undergoing a major surgery and i hope that it turns out well for you um and yeah so glad i was able to finally film this video i've been wanting to do this for a couple months now and i'm going to be doing probably a health update video soon probably within the next couple months um, and anything else you guys want to see, just drop it below. Love you guys.